Hi, uh, welcome to a, another um, uh, episode in the celebration of Dr. Hummer's 89th um, birth anniversary and our May celebration as part of the Global GHK Foundation. Uh, today, I have the great honor of uh, interviewing Nelly, Parnett, uh, Nelly Barnett, who's in Australia. And she is a uh, Germanic New Medicine or Germanic Healing Knowledge Practitioner based in Australia and one of the few or maybe the only practitioner of uh, this modality in Australia. Um, today we are going to um, have a discussion on uh, Germanic Healing Knowledge within the family and, and Nelly's experiences of using it uh, uh, within her home environment. Uh, before we get started, I need to just get the disclaimer done. So just give me a second. So disclaimer, the information given in this presentation is for educational purposes only. Participants shall consult their, doc their medical doctors for health reasons before using anything that is disclosed during the course of this presentation. Students shall, students shall use uh, shall not use any of the information in this presentation whilst writing their exams. Okay, so now back to the fun bit. Uh, so today I'd like to introduce Nelly. Nelly, welcome to uh, Dr. Hummer's birth celebration. Thank you so much for, for participating and sharing your experiences. Thanks, Danny. Very happy to be here. And it's yeah, delightful to connect with you and all the community again. And first up, thanks for being born, Dr. Hammer. <laughs> oh, yes. Dr. Hammer. What a hero. Oh, my God. What a genius. Um, right. So uh, let, uh, uh, I prepared a, a few questions in advance. Nelly, we can and uh, we can move between and around and beyond the questions. But uh, let's uh, let's kick off with this one. Um, how has GHK impacted your journey as a mother? Mm, hugely. So I started studying Germany medicine about nine years ago now. And as soon as I came into contact with it, I describe it um, like coming home. It was like someone had finally put a language to everything that I had intuitively felt, but never been able to ex properly explain or, um, you know, have scientific reasoning behind. And GHK really gave me that. And so uh, my daughter was, I think, five at the time when we started to um, come to understand it. And so it just completely changed the trajectory of my motherhood journey, really. Um, you know, the way, obviously, the way that we started to look at disease and symptoms completely shifted. And I'd say that it's actually prompted me and required that I step up into motherhood in a completely different way as well, because it, um, you know, I really started to understand the impact that I can have on my child's health. Like there is a great responsibility that comes with the knowledge of GNM, GHK, right? Like it's, it's fantastic, but it comes with a really big responsibility because we, yeah, we start to understand that we can have a serious impact on the health and wellbeing of those around us. Now, of course, to some extent, it's always the individual's um, responsibility to, to take accountability for that and the way that they perceive and experience things. But we can, we can impact, especially if we're someone who knows GNM, GHK, and perhaps the other person doesn't. Um, and there's a whole nother trajectory of conversation, right? But yeah, it really- It was an example of, uh, of an early experience you had uh, using this knowledge with your, with your children. Yeah, so- um, one, of the, one of the first ones where you're like, wow, <laughs> one of the biggest ones was actually within myself but I would say um it's actually like with my children it hasn't been such a like it's not a one big thing but it's been all the little symptoms along the way so the common you know colds flus runny noses coughs all these sorts of things it's just completely eliminated the fear and that's meant that the symptoms are generally much less severe and much less, you know, much, they're short-lived. They're not extended. Yeah. Um, and like one of the ones that I remember so clearly was a case of quote unquote, the stomach flu or gastro going around my daughter's school and everyone was going down like flies, you know, like every mm -hmm. person was getting it in the, the conventional medicine language. Um, and I remember Sophia came home 
on the bus. She was like, and it already started the day before. So I'd prepped her. I'd been like, babe, this doesn't have to be yours. Like you can stand outside of this um, and go on through. I think she was like probably about eight at the time. So she was starting to really grasp concept and language well. And so, yep, she went into school prepared and she came home the next day. She was like, mom was fine the whole day. And then it just really started to get to me. Like everyone's talking about it. Everyone's scared of it. Every, you know, all this stuff. And she's like, and on the bus on the way home, I started feeling like not great. And I was like, okay, well, let's talk about that. Like, what do we know? What, you know, let's break this down. And we really we sat in the car and we broke it down and we went through everything that we know. And what is this? It's a resolution phase of, you know, most likely an indigestible morsel conflict or something in that realm. Mm. Um, and we sent the car, we've had this conversation. She really relaxed about it. She got out of the car. She did one massive vomit, like one hurl. Uh. <laughs> And then <clears throat> went inside and lay down and that was it. She was fine, you know, and I was cleaning her up. I was in contact with her. I experienced no symptoms whatsoever. Um, and she just had that little kind of hint of it, but she was one and done. You know, most families were experiencing symptoms for 24, 48 hours, ongoing, vomiting, all the things. And so that was a real, yeah, you could just see the whole thing play out in the timeline, you know, um, yeah, all the synchronicity of it. So that was a really cool example. But yeah, it's it's really just the the little things, the day to day things. And um, so it's yeah, it's massively impacted my journey as a mother. It's made me, like I said, far more aware of how I speak and how I behave with my children. I am definitely not perfect. I definitely still yell at my kids sometimes. I definitely still lose my temper. Shame on you, Nelly. I'm perfect. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. Shame on me. <laughs> how do you do it, Danny? Yeah, um, I don't have kids. That's how I do it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Pipe down then. <laughs> so what What age? What, yeah. I, know, I mean, okay. Uh, when you said your eldest daughter was five when you started. Yep. So uh, yep. did, uh, did you start was... teaching? Did you start teaching it from that age? And I mean, how, how, do, you, how do you teach it? I don't know. I don't know. Kids yeah. are, I don't know, right? How how yeah. do you how do you how do you teach kids this? Yeah. yeah. So my daughter Sophia was about five, and then my uh, son Banjo has been born into this. And so the teaching is like we don't sit down with a book and a chart and go through you know the embry embryological layers, but it's just integrated into the language of our family. Yeah. So um, you know the kids are just growing up with no fear around the concept of catching things or contagion Amazing. theory. Um, and it's just been so empowering. And so the, like I said, the teaching is very natural. It's woven into our language. It's woven into the way we go about our day. It's woven into the way that we behave when something is going around town, you know, and we're just, we continue on with life as normal. And this is really what we tried to do through the whole let's call it pandemic as well. We tried to keep life as normal as possible, stay out of fear, you know, yeah, these things are built in. So that's kind of how we're teaching it. With Sophia now, she's going on 14. So mm -hmm. I am starting to bring a little bit more technicality into it. Okay. But on her lead, so she will now come to me and be like, mum, what's the conflict behind this symptom? And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so proud. <laughs> it's the best, that's amazing. The best thing. It's so good. And I'm like, right, let's have a look. Like, let's sit down. And I'm like, so where does that fit in your timeline? Where have you experienced this? We can have a conversation about it. So obviously, yeah, the symptoms, therefore, when they do arise, and I would say that in my kids, we probably only experience symptoms about two, maybe three times a year. Right. Um, and forget actually that like childhood symptoms are so much more prevalent than that you know like I speak to people around me and they're on cycles of symptoms every six weeks or so and I'm like far out I forget and this is largely to do with this language that we speak in home and how we um, interact with it so um, yes yeah, it comes to me now with with more technical questions which is really cool and for my two-year-old, three-year-old, it's just, like I said, naturally woven into the language and, and how we go about things. So, yeah. So I, I've been I've been trying to to spread the concept and the idea. Um, uh, I, I 
put together a presentation structure that said, can you imagine a world without disease? Mm. Um, and this, um, this uh, uh, one of the core theses of this presentation, <coughs> sorry, T went down the wrong hole. Um, one of the core theses of this presentation is that uh, if this knowledge was taught to children, um, there would be no such thing as disease because if they got chicken pox or measles or whatever, I mean, they would know that they resolved the separation conflict rather than some Weasley virus running around the classroom, right? Um, so I guess you are uh, you are starting the, the, the journey of, uh, of, of demonstrating that in practice, right? I, mean, I don't know kids, right? So I can't actually test it, but... Uh, but it sounds like you are you are uh, you are actually putting that into practice, um, exactly. and it'll be interesting to see how your kids turn out. I guess they will, uh, if you have your way, uh, be living in a world where there is uh, no such thing as disease, right? Yeah, and we'll have to see where their journey takes them. You know, I am aware that they are their own independent beings, and so I can only guide them, and then what they take on and take up is going to be up to them. But I hope that yeah, the groundwork we're doing now resonates and stays with them for life and it's going to be so interesting like you say to see how that turns out because at this point in time we're living proof of what that information can do like I said symptoms two to two maybe three times a year that is like unheard of in amongst the community that I speak to and our neighbors and that sort of thing so and, um, and you mentioned when when they do now at least your daughter that uh, when when she does suffer from some sort of symptoms she doesn't look at it like a disease right she does ask what conflict it is and how to resolve it and yeah so she's she's already well on the journey of of she's living in a, in, a, in a world without disease right and it means that quite often her symptoms are not severe at all and very short-lived because like I said that fear is not there we're often able to pinpoint the conflict like quite quickly. And she understands that her symptoms are not a sign that something is wrong or she's mm -hmm. caught something. She understands that generally speaking, she's moved into the healing phase, the resolution of something and her adaptations are reversing. So it's just having that language there is so profound. Um, and a couple of things, something else that just came to mind, like if this is valuable for anyone is I'm starting to keep a diary for my children of large events that happen in our life and yep. um, and symptoms that they experience. Because one of the things I found really hard as an adult not growing up with this knowledge is now looking at the programs that I'm running, which I know because that they've been um, confirmed via CT scan and I had uh, had symptoms and had ideas around what they were anyway. But it's quite difficult to pinpoint like where they started from, where they initiated from, what the timeline is and that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just keeping just a note diary for both of them um, that, you know, if they do experience big things when they're older, if there are, you know, because I haven't had their CT scans done. So if there are mm. larger programs that are running that they need to do within the future, at least they'll have some kind of record and understanding of what um, major, major events. Traumas. Yeah, major events. Yeah. 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 So that's one. And with my son as well. So when a, qu a question I get asked quite often is like, how do you work with babies and small children? And I really feel like this work is up to the parents, right? I mean, a lot of the time the programs are just sorting themselves out anyway, and we don't actually need to do anything. We just need to support the person. <laughs> but something I find that can be really beautiful and support that process is when um, they are experiencing symptoms or when I can see that they have gone into conflict activity, they've gone cold and they're mm -hmm. they've got no appetite and they're struggling with sleep is talking to my son in my sleep. So he's, he's two going on three. Um, and so for young children, I think this is something really beautiful that we can do as mothers. You can do that with babies as well, right? I mean, you can, when they're sleeping, you can talk to yep. them and their yep. subconscious mind will absorb it, right? Correct, yeah. So if there's, if there's major issues going on, whatever, you're fighting with your partner or something or whatever, you yep. can speak to the child whilst uh, a baby, whilst it's sleeping. And it will, fully, it will fully, we don't understand, right? But it will fully absorb what you were telling it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the theory. And that seems to be what, from what I've experienced, that seems to be true and correct. Um, so yeah, speaking to him in his sleep, telling him what's going on, letting him know mm -hmm. that he's safe and he's loved and his body's just sorting something out. 
Um, and, you know, Dr. Harmer said what we can't resolve in our waking hours, we we try to resolve in our sleep, in our dreams. Right. Um, so I do believe that that happens. And this is where we see a lot of, um, you know, epicrisis in the nighttime with young children as well. Um, this is generally where they tend to spew or um, have their fevers and these sorts of things. So, yeah, it's just been it's been amazing to have this knowledge. And it's so interesting, like I said, to have my teen now asking the technical questions and to have my son grow up from day dot, you know, the conception and pregnancy even was with GNM, GHK knowledge. So that made, you know, there was shifts even there. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, Nelly, I, I actually, uh, I forgot to, to ask you the question, but you're not, you're not a doctor, right? No, correct. Just a mum. I did have some background. Um, I'd done, um, set three and four in personal fitness training and gym instruction, and I had some other modalities under my belt, NLP, uh, neuro-linguistic programming, some hypnosis stuff, Reiki, um, breath work, juice fasting. But yeah, I just came at this as a mum and a, a human <laughs> who immediately resonated with the information. And I guess that's part of the message that I really want to deliver today is that, you know, this is available and accessible to the average person, the average family and, and you know, each and every home. And that's really where I'm passionate about um, getting it into as well. Hey guys, so unfortunately we just lost Danny through his internet connection going out, but I'm going to roll forwards with this and try and cover what we were going to speak about anyway and finish it off. So Danny had just asked me like, you're not a doctor, right? And no, I'm not. I'm just a mum who came into this knowledge um, and it's just been so profound in the way that it's changed our lives. So what I'll uh, speak to now is some of the benefits that we've experienced through bringing this into our lives and um, I guess mothering through the principles of Germany medicine, shamanic healing knowledge. So first and foremost, obviously, like I've mentioned already, the frequency and severity of symptoms has been greatly reduced. Um, we just really don't tend to get, quote unquote, sick anymore much at all. Um, so obviously that has huge benefit in that it saves us time, resources, energy. Nobody likes to have kids who are not feeling well. So that's been a massive benefit. Um, obviously it's, like I said, it's really changed the way that I parent as well in terms of how I deal with my children, how we discipline them, um, the connection that we really nurture between us and our children um, things like, you know, at three years old, I'm still breastfeeding my son and he still co-sleeps with us. And we're just really mindful of how our behavior can potentially instigate programs within our children. So like I said, I'm definitely not perfect. <laughs> I definitely still lose my temper sometimes, yell sometimes, all the things. But what I would say is that I'm very aware of how those things can impact my children biologically now. And so what I do always make sure I do is to, in those times where I am being human and losing my temper or doing the things, uh, to make sure that I go back and apologize quite quickly afterwards. I go gather my thoughts, gather myself, and then I always come back and speak to me, speak with my children and explain to them what happened from my perspective, give them an opportunity to share their perspective and offer an apology. I quite often say, I'm really sorry, I was out of line. I didn't need to speak to you like that or that didn't need to happen. And so what we can see here is that, you know, if there's any triggers in play, if there's any tracks in play, they're quite quickly negated um, and conflicts uh, don't tend to um, arise. Of course, we can't protect our kids from everything, but we can certainly have a raised awareness around how we parent. So that's definitely been a benefit. Um, like I've mentioned already as well, the dissipation of fear in symptoms themselves has made has had, had huge benefits in our lives. Um, and it's also been had a really strong impact on the relationship between my partner and I too. So living within, I guess, the biological laws of GNM, GHK and understanding hormonal status in a much better way, which is something I've come into re uh, relatively recently um, through the Freya course with um, Dr. Sasha has been an absolute game changer in particular. And so this has really enabled my partner and I um, to live very biologically and in alignment with the five biological laws, uh, which impacts our relationship in a positive way. And then that ripples out to our children as well. So we're seeing again, less frequency and severity in symptoms and biological programs that are running in general. Um, 
the other question we were going to speak about, Danny and I, was what have been the challenges of living with the GNM GHK paradigm? Because there are some, right? And uh, one of the things I hear most frequently from mothers who I work with, and I know I experienced myself as well, is a feeling of, um, I guess it's responsibility or burden. Because now we know this information, there can be a fear around potentially setting off biological programs for our children. And this is something I hear really, really commonly. And I, like I said, I've definitely experienced it myself as well. And what I would say to this is that we need to realize that we can't protect our kids from everything. We can definitely, like I've just spoken to, you know, we can definitely um, rearrange the way that we parent and we can, um, you know, negate the need for biological conflicts and, and tracks for a lot of the time, but we can't protect them from everything and they are going to have their own journey. And so it's definitely not helpful to be in a place of fear around that. And it's, yeah, it's so common when we come into the knowledge, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that because I might set off a biological program. I don't want them to go there. I don't want them to do that. I, you know, and it can get quite compulsive and obsessive and that's not helpful for anyone either. So it has to be a balance between, yes, understanding that we have a responsibility with this information and this information can be highly beneficial to both our lives and the lives of our children but also not turning it into that more obsessive thing and understanding that our kids are going to run their own journey. And this probably steps more into that kind of energetic, spiritual uh, realm of things where we can come into a trust of universal divinity playing out in their journey. Um, so that's definitely one of the challenges and something to be aware of if you're new coming into GNM GHK. And then, of course, you know, it can be really challenging living with this information and living by this information in a world that, um, you know, it's still a minority. And that's what we're trying to change here. You know, we, we are really trying to change this. We are trying to make sure this information gets out further to the world and that, the, the, and that this is accessible um, within the average family home. But for the time being, it is a minority. And so that's been a challenge in itself as well, because we're not always understood for our choices. Um, you know, with things like we limit very, very much limit screen time and social media and that sort of thing in our household with our kids. And that can be difficult for them to deal with too. So it's just being aware of these things. And then, um, you know, if you know that these things can be slightly problematic, it's having that awareness and having that foresight to see, okay, how am I going to navigate these things coming into this paradigm of health and wellness. So there are a couple of the challenges that we've experienced um, in living by and with this information, but they definitely don't outweigh the benefits. So I would do it all over again um, if I had to, for sure. So the last thing we were going to touch on was what message I would really love for you all to hear today. And to be honest, this is quite a common message within the JHK community. But my message to you today is really to, especially if you're new to this body of work, is to learn GHK as quickly as possible for yourselves and your families, because there is nothing worse than trying to learn this when you are already with symptoms and in discomfort. It's something that I see so often is people coming to me in a panic when they're already deep in the discomfort of symptoms or have children that are, and it's really tricky to understand this information when you're there. I mean, of course, it's better than never at all, but the best time to learn GHK is now while you're well. This is definitely something that you want to be proactive about because it sets you up so brilliantly for when the symptoms do come about and you're going to know exactly what's going on and how to move through um, those phases and, and what to do with them. So that would be my message um, to all the mums and dads and families out there and all the individuals in general is to learn this as well as you can right now <laughs> to be proactive for your future. And also just to know that spreading the word on this is definitely something that is super important and super valuable. We're all playing a part in getting this um, you know, out to the world. And my goodness, like I said, right at the very beginning of this conversation, a huge, huge thanks to Dr. Harmer for being born. Thanks to his mother for birthing him. And what an absolute blessing and gift to the world Dr. Harmer has given through his life's work. I'm so incredibly 
grateful to have come across it and to have this knowledge that I have been able to integrate into our family um, with so much benefit and so much value. So that's really all that I have for you today. I just wanted to speak, like I said, to, um, to the parents, to the families, to the everyday person who maybe is feeling a little overwhelmed by this um, because it is a big body of work. It is a big bundle of information. And I just want you to know that it is accessible to you. Um, and yeah, just to keep keep moving forwards with it and integrating it into your life because the benefits and values are extremely profound. Um, in terms of where you can find me, my business name is New Earth Wellness. I'm Nelly. You can find me on Instagram at Nelly underscore New Earth Wellness. My website is currently Nelly Be Well, but shortly shifting to New Earth Wellness as well. And at the moment, I am loving teaching mums and dads and families and the everyday person, the foundations of GNM GHK. Um, I teach a lot of people from Australia, but all across the world as well. And I also have our practitioner integration course, which is getting this information into the hands of holistic practitioners so that they can start to apply it to their work and their own modalities as well. That's not to say we want to distort the information of Dr. Harmer at all. It's just to say that we can use it and it can be hugely beneficial and valuable um, in among and alongside other modalities as an underpinning roadmap to how to work with clients. So that's what I'm loving teaching and sharing at the moment. I do do a bit of work one-on-one -on -one with people, um, but as a mother, my capacity is not huge right now. So my focus is on teaching. Anyway, I would love to connect further and converse with you. If you want to reach out and say hi, please do so. And yeah, once again, thanks for being born, Dr. Harmer, and thanks for bringing this incredible knowledge to the world. Blessings to you all.